everyone, it's Nicole Spore for Lawn Fawn, and today I'm sharing some felt mugs gift tag ornaments. One of my favorite things to make for the holidays are some gift tags that can actually be reused over and over again as an ornament after you've given them wrapped on a package. And felt gift tags are some of my favorite, and I always find it a great fun challenge to use just regular dies from companies on and and use them to make felt tags so die cut them from felt. I have pre die cut most of the components here. We're going to be using the outside in stitched mug and then we're going to also use the little parts from the stitched mug frame and then for this first card, we're going to be using the Shadow Box Fireplace add-on to create this Santa little uh, hanging feet image on the front of a mug. So this year, I thought it'd be fun to create these little uh, mugs with different designs on them, since kind of coffee mugs or tea mugs are such a fun thing to get for the holidays. I know, for example, Target always has a great assortment. So that's really kind of where my inspiration for this came from. And I always like to try to find a way to, as I said, incorporate the, the images and things from the die collections into felt designs that can be made into an ornament that can be used over and over again. Now I like to use a combination of hot glue and hand stitching. So it will really just kind of depend on the image. So I'm hot gluing Santa's legs on, for example. We're gonna hot glue his the trim on his pants. We're gonna hot glue the boots and then the fireplace and stuff. So most of the components on this first mug are hot glued. Now the little tea bag here, that is going to, I die cut two of those and I'm going to thread through some lawn trimmings twine and then we're going to sandwich the twine in between the two. I don't know if I did for this first one, but I realized it could slip out pretty easily. So I did hot glue it for the rest of them, but we're going to secure it that way. And then we're going to hand stitch all the way around, just doing a little running stitch. In fact, I'm going to be doing a running stitch for all of my pieces today. And even though I'm going to be stuffing them with a little polyester fiber fill, it's still going to be super secure. And it's a great way to um, give all of these pieces a little extra something. Now, I am not stuffing this little image. This is just back to back um, by having two of these little tea bags adhered back to back or stitched back to back. This is going to allow us to not see any of the stitching. It's going to kind of keep it all nice and clean. It's going to hide the lawn trimmings, twine, all the things that you wouldn't see if you were die cutting these from paper and adhering them flat to a card. Since this is dimensional, we really need two. That's going to go for the mug as well. I die cut two of the mug. They're going to be stitched back to back. And we're gonna stuff that one though, which I'll show in a second. But I did wanna keep in the stitching of one of the little uh, tea bags here. And so you could see the steps for that. I don't think I will share that um, for the rest of my little felt uh, coffee or, or teacup images. So save a little bit of time because I know this is a longer video. I always think it's such a fun challenge to find ways to take dies that aren't necessarily made for felt or ornament making. I know some, some companies do have those kinds of dies, but I love Lawn Fawn dies. I have found that some of my favorite felt ornaments have come from using dies from the collection to come up with my own felt designs. So there is a little stitched heart in the center of this tea bag. It does not die cut out. It just creates the stitching line. Well, there isn't a heart in the outside in stitched mug, but there is one in the stitched mug frame. So we're going to use that, uh, the little heart from that, for the accent on this tag. And again, that's going to be hot glued in place. 
When we get around to where we started, I'm going to only come up through one layer and then I'm going to hide the stitching by just kind of going through the center and pulling out down near maybe the side or the bottom with my needle and thread. I did use all six strands of embroidery floss for my running stitch. That is gonna be the same thing for the mug as well. I purposely left the string on the lawn trimmings a little bit long. It really does not need to be near this long. In fact, I could probably trim that in half and get at least two out of that. My other suggestion, if you want to make felt ornaments from your die cuts, is to use a good quality felt. This is 100% wool felt. Um, it's not going to rip and tear like some other uh, felts might that are a little bit cheaper or a mix of, you know, uh, fibers. I really highly, highly recommend investing in some good felt. There are are several out in the crafting, paper crafting, even marketplace right now that I just really love because I think the quality is so much better. I have placed my mug pieces back to back now and I will tell you that probably I should have gone ahead and adhered or glued down and placed the rest of my images, which is going to be fine as long as you don't stuff your ornament, you will be able to glue everything nice and flat. If you're going to be doing any decorative stitching, so maybe you want to stitch something on the front of a mug, you're going to see that with the gingerbread or the joy mugs that I'll create here in a minute. Or if you need to sew on any sequins. I believe the reindeer and the gingerbread both have a sequin on them. I recommend not stitching your mug pieces together until you have done those steps because it makes it a lot easier than trying to finagle away to adhere those because we wanna hide any of our stitching inside of the mug. That's why we're stitching these front to back or front or back to back, pardon me, and then stuffing with a little polyester fiber fill. My other big tip is to not overstuff the ornament. I know I have sped this up again. It's a simple running stitch. I will tell you the running stitch only goes around the cup, not the handle. The handle I glued together with hot glue as I found that that was the best way to create an ornament from the mugs and still secure the fiber fill inside of the mug because I don't wanna to try to, to put fiber fill in the mug handle, um, stitch around that, there would just be no way to do that. So I found this really worked the best. So when we get up here to the top, we don't wanna go ahead and finish stitching that. I'm gonna leave my thread in place for a second and I am Going to go ahead and glue down the log for the fire, the fire itself, the boots, the little trim, all of the things. Now, one of the reasons that I did not glue these things down, I could have finished Santa, but the reason I did not glue the log down is because it is going over the stitching. I didn't want to stitch over that for this portion. I will stitch over Santa's legs, but I didn't want to stitch over that. And I really needed to leave plenty of room to have the fire and the log at the bottom of the mug. So now I have finished gluing everything down, trying to get rid of any of those little hot glue threads. I have had my hot glue gun, by the way, for probably, I don't even know how long to tell you. It's super old. It's a little mini glue gun and it works fantastic. So it's a kind of a great little investment because it does come in handy for lots of things. I am tearing my polyester fiber fill into small pieces that I'm then tucking into the mug. Again, I highly recommend do not overstuff. I'm also tucking the little string from the tea bag into my mug because I want to secure that with a stitch. 
You can also hot glue it. As I worked on more of these mugs, I opted to hot glue them in place instead. So definitely an option there. And then we're simply gonna kind of pinch it shut and finish stitching up the top of our mug. And yeah, I did keep the top open. I found that kind of worked the easiest for the creation here. Once I have secured the little tea bag, then makes it very easy. And again, just a nice little running stitch all the way. I don't have to worry about um, trying to thread any twine through this to secure as the ornament hanger or tag hanger because we can thread that through the handle of our coffee mug or a tea mug here, which is so nice. I really love that because. Um, working around the strings in an ornament tends to be maybe the trickiest thing. Um, I still love to do that to turn little plushy things, uh, felt things into tags or ornaments, but this just really is super handy that it, the coffee mug has that handle that we can thread the twine through, which you'll see here in a little bit at the end of the video. Now, because felt does not have anything to be able to write on, like the to and the from, we will be creating paper tags that we then thread on to with our felt ornament that can be removed after the recipient has opened their present. And I'll show you the creation of those in a minute. I felt like I needed a little extra hot glue. Some of the elements were not, um, as secure as I would like and that kind of happens throughout and you can always add just a little bit more as needed. So there is our first mug all complete. So cute. Next we are going to take again our outside in stitched mug, the stitched mug frame, the little hearts from that, and then the tiny gift box deer add-on which I know is not a new die collection from Lawn Fawn, but one of my favorite things is to mix and patch new and old. And we are going to be creating a little reindeer down along the bottom. Now, because the reindeer actually cuts straight across, I die cut the reindeer head or the front here of that tiny gift box from the beige felt. And then I took the mug die and die cut it so that it had that nice curved edge along the bottom. That's how we are achieving the curved edge along the bottom that makes it nice to secure to our mug front. Keep in mind, you don't wanna add any glue along the bottom edge. If you're securing the deer to the mug with your hot glue before doing any stitching because you don't wanna to try to stitch through hot glue, Believe me, it is not fun to do. It's almost impossible. And so you wanna be really careful with where you're adhering that. In this case, I kind of kept it up high because I am securing the pieces with hot glue, but I just don't want to uh, have to stitch through that. We're gonna glue the face component down. Now, instead of trying to inlay the little black pieces for the eyes, or the small, small piece for the mouth, we are actually gonna glue a little red felt nose on. You could also do a little red pom-pom, which I think would be really, really cute. Um, or even a black pom-pom if you don't wanna make it Rudolph. We're going to create some French knots for the eyes. It's the same thing that we will do for the gingerbread mug here in a minute. So we're gonna take six strands of black embroidery floss and come up from the back of the mug. And this is a good example of what I was talking about a few minutes ago with if you're gonna do any stitching on the mug front to the image that you're adding, go ahead and do that before you stitch the mug pieces back to back. In this case, I'm gonna glue the little holly leaves down. But for the berries, I did die cut them from from red felt, but then I decided to switch that out and actually use red sequins and seed beads instead. As I really love the look of adding something a little bit sparkly. Um, I didn't do it for every one of the mugs, but I do like adding it here and there. 
So we're gonna come up from the back and we're gonna grab a little sequin. We'll use a little clear seed bead to thread on here. And then we're gonna go back down through the center of the sequin to secure that to our ornament front. And we're gonna do that three times. And that's gonna be our little holly berries for this cute design. And I'm really trying to avoid any hot glue as you can see. The insides of the ears you'll notice as well, that little piece die cuts out and I like to have like little pink insides of the ear or even beige or that tan, not tan, but uh, ivory color would be fine. I'm gonna die cut the head again from some pink felt and we'll inlay those here in a little bit with some hot glue. Grab another sequin. Again, we'll grab another seed bead. For this step, you will need beading needles. Not just any needle is going to do, it has to have a super small eye on it in order to go through the seed bead and the sequin, all of those things. So keep that in mind. For that, I like to use only two strands of embroidery floss as opposed to six. Um, makes it a lot easier to thread your needle, plus you just don't need all six strands. The six strands is great when you want the stitching detail to be um, very visible and part of the design element. Otherwise, I like to keep it to a few less strands. That way, you're not seeing it. Then we're just gonna tie that off on the back once we've added our seed beads. And then we're gonna be ready to add the French knots for the eyes on our reindeer. Look how cute it's looking, you guys. So excited about this. We're gonna come up from the back. and I've knotted it already on the back. We're gonna wrap the thread around the needle and then kind of tighten it up and go right back through. This is called a French knot. And I did use hot glue on the back of this reindeer. It's one of the reasons why I said you have to be super careful with it. Um, I had to grab my pliers to kind of help pull that through very gently because you don't want to rip it through the felt. You could do that. But look how easy it is then to add some great little eyes to your critter. Um, a great way just to not have to do that hot gluing of such teeny tiny little pieces, as well as adding great texture to your card. Wrap that those strands of embroidery floss around your needle and then push it right back through and it creates this little knot on the front of the design. And then we just kind of want to pull it nice and, and taut and not super hard because again, you don't want to rip it through. And then I'm going to tie that off. I can tie it off on the back. I actually opted to go ahead and go down and I'm going to just stitch three little stitches to create a mouth. Then we're gonna have the little pink inlay for the ears as I was talking earlier. I did stitch the little tea bag off camera. I think it's a fun way, just a fun little accent for these mugs. You definitely could leave that step out if you don't want to uh, do that. But then we can place the mugs back to back. And we're gonna do a little running stitch all the way around stuff our mug with polyester fiber fill and do all those same finishing little details that I did before. We're gonna put a little hot glue on the back of the ears and then just pop in the little pink pieces. I'm actually using my Spellbinders tool in one, just the sharp tip to pick those up. With hot glue, you, remember you do have to work fairly quick before it cools. And there is Rudolph on our red felt mug. I just think he is so cute and so much fun. 
you could really do any of the tiny box add-ons that you like. Here's that hot glue on the handle. So we're, we'll secure the pieces together at the handle. And then we're gonna take our running stitch, go all the way around, stuff it, add the little tea bag, and we are gonna be ready for our joy mug. Now this is great because you could actually personalize mugs with initials if you wanted to as well. This is using the Oliver's Stitched ABCs. These are perfect. They have the little stitching line in them, which is gonna be great because we're gonna stitch these on. And then we're gonna use the Tiny Gift Box Holiday Hats add-on, the Santa hat, to decorate the O in joy. So kind of simple, I guess, but one of my favorite looks. I think this is so, so cute. Um, there's not a ton of room, so you can't really spell out anything super long. Like if you wanted to do Mary or Peace, that's not really going to fit. But if you wanted to do someone's initials to personalize the mugs, I think that would be super cute and very easy to do. I am stitching on my letters with some red embroidery floss. I die cut the letters from green felt and we're gonna place them on this heathered gray mug. Again, we're doing the stitching portion of this first. So anything we're going to add to the front of the mug, we wanna do first. A little running stitch adds the nice color and detail, a really great little contrast. And then the red and green, of course, is just nice traditional Christmas colors. And then we'll grab the J and stitch it on. And for the Santa hat, we are going to use hot glue to secure the, that instead of stitching. All the pieces are so teeny tiny, and I think that'll just work best. I Like I said, I like to use a combination of hot glue and stitching, kind of just wherever it works the best. Another option for this would be the little stocking cap, which would be a nice alternative to the Santa hat. You could also use the Santa hat or the stocking cap on the gingerbread man which would be really cute, which is gonna be our final mug I'm gonna to share today for something a little bit different. Now we're gonna take the hat pieces and I'm going to hot glue the brim on the red Santa hat. We'll glue this to our mug front, add the little white pom-pom, and then we're gonna stitch this cup just like we did the previous two. And I am going to not include that in the video just to save some time since the assembly is exactly the same. Our final felt mug today is going to be a gingerbread man or gingerbread girl mug. You could definitely do either one. This uses the great gingerbread friends dies that was released, I believe, I think last year, I might be wrong. But this is a lot like the reindeer where I die cut the gingerbread man from my tan felt and then I'm going to take my mug die and die cut it so that it follows that bottom edge of the mug kind of coming in from the side. Now for the gingerbread man, because it has the stitching detail around it, and I use the smaller of the two, I think that's important to note as well, that you can stitch this on really, really easily. So I did stitch it on and I love how it looks. I'm gonna use white, embroidery floss to stitch this on. This has a lot of stitching, probably a little bit more than any of the others just because we're gonna stitch this all on. If you don't want to use felt, you could very, very easily, uh, for like the little accents, the little rickrack accents, you could very easily go ahead and just stitch on a design as opposed to uh, gluing them down like I'm going to do. The little pieces are a little tricky 
too glue down in place, not gonna lie. And then I had a little knot in my thread, so I had to completely rethread that. Sorry about that. But this is another example that instead of adding a die cut face because the pieces get so small or layering it, which I don't think looks very good with the felt, um, not as good as it does like with paper, I am going to sew on or pardon me, stitch on some eyes using a French knot. I am going to go ahead and glue the little mouth on. I think if I would do it again though, I would totally um, just stitch a little mouth because the piece is really, really small. And trying to fiddle with your hot glue, if you're not comfortable with that, I just recommend stitching it because it's so much easier. Again, just that little running stitch all the way around, securing it to our mug. And this is a little cream mug with our tan gingerbread man and then red and green accents. You can see I've got the little tea bag over there to the side that's gonna be red and green, so there's a lot of color there. And then I've got a little bow. It can either be a hair bow, which is what I'm gonna do, or a bow tie. We've got some little red rickrack pieces and little red heart buttons. We really wanna decorate the gingerbread um, as much as possible, give it lots and lots of character. This was a little bit more work, but I actually think it's so worth it. I love, love, love how it turned out. So let's snip those ends off and wasn't quite straight, so I just trimmed off that excess. And then I'm gonna use tweezers in my hot glue, which really, for the most part, part worked really well. Um, there were a couple little areas that didn't. And as I finish up this felt tag, I can go ahead and add extra glue as needed. So here's that little mouth I was talking about that really, if I had to do this over, I don't think I would glue it on just because it's really small. And I ended up having to add a little bit more glue and I really didn't wanna get glue all over the gingerbread man, but it worked out. <laughs> I just wasn't sure that it was going to. Got the bigger rickrack piece. which gave me some fits as well. That's why I was saying if you feel comfortable uh, stitching, I would suggest you could do that, but the texture of the felt pieces is really nice. Then these little red hearts we're adding with hot glue as I'm peeling hot glue off of my nails and everything else. And then, we are going to stitch on the little bow with, or I guess the eyes first. So French knot first, come up from the back, wrap all six strands around your needle and push back through the same hole. We're gonna do that two times, of course, to create our eyes. And you can see the little face come to life now, which definitely helps. And then you can do a bow tie. I really think there's even room on this design to do a bow tie, or you can do what I'm gonna do and I'm just gonna stick the little bow up on top of her head, but we're going to attach it with a sequin and a seed bead. I will tell you that I went back a little bit later and added a little dab of hot glue underneath just to secure it so that it didn't flop around and so that I was just sure that it wasn't gonna come off. Just grabbing whatever green sequin that matches my felt from my collection, a little clear seed bead. With seed beads, you come up through your project, up through the center of the sequin, through the seed bead, wrap around the seed bead, and back through the same hole in your sequin. And that is how you attach sequins to a project like this. Look how cute she is, isn't that fun? We're gonna add some hot glue to the handle. And then we're going to stitch this coffee mug and tea bag just like we did before. And now we are ready to do the finishing last steps, which is our little paper tags. Off camera, I die cut all of the components I needed for my tags from some smooth white cardstock, noble fur, fur and chili pepper lawn fawn cardstocks. 
We're using the scalloped circle gift tag. We're gonna have a white scallop tag, which is the back, and we're gonna stamp it with the two sentiment from the Shutter Card Holiday Sayings using lobster red ink. We're gonna do that for all four. You can see I'm assembly line style creating now using my Misty so I can stamp these really quickly. After we have done this step, this is the back of the tag, we're going to take the front of the tag, which is going to be the red stitched circle, and we are going to stamp one of the sentiments from the Shutter Card Holiday Sayings on that tag using Lawn Fawn Clear Embossing Ink. So I've got Happy Holidays, just for you, have a Merry Christmas and have a sweet holiday. We're going to sprinkle on white embossing powder and heat emboss with our heat tool for that nice bright white on the red tag. Even though this part of the tag will more than likely get tossed after the gift has been given so that you can keep the felt ornament, I still want it to look nice. I just didn't want to spend tons of time on it. So I'm just adding all of these little pieces, little parts and pieces, because I think it really gives a beautiful finished look. And if creating the felt tags is not your thing, but you still want some cute holiday tags, these tags on their own would still be darling, take a lot less time, and would be a great way to adorn your packages. You could do these in any color combination that matches your wrapping paper. After I have all of my sentiments heat embossed on the red tag, we can adhere the red tag to the green tag with some adhesive. Now, one of the things that I think really finishes each of these tags off so, so well is the black hole reinforcer. There are two different sizes of hole reinforcement dies in the scalloped circle gift tag. I'm using the larger of the two. I'm gluing the scalloped tags back to back and then adding the red on top. And you can see they just line up perfectly with that little hole. I'm gonna take liquid glue and add my hole reinforcement to not only the front, but the back as well, so it's super nice and finished. I did try to do like all of the fronts first and then I flipped them over and did the back so that the glue had a chance to dry. Using a glue that has a fine tip applicator is so great here as well, just so that glue isn't squishing out all over the place. I wanna use as minimum, the minimal amount of glue as possible, I guess I wanna say. Once we have our tags all assembled, we are ready to go ahead and thread through our black and white lawn trimmings twine uh, with our felt tag and a paper tag and then knot it together to make it secure. You can then tie these to packages or hang them on a tree, whatever you want to do. But I love that the felt tag then becomes part of the gift and it's something that can be used even after. We're gonna take a felt ornament, a piece of lawn trimmings twine, and a paper tag, and we're gonna thread them all together by threading the trimmings twine through the handle of the mug and then through a paper tag, knotting the ends together and trimming those to a nice even length and that is gonna finish each of our felt tag ornaments. We wanna make sure and do this for each one, and they are ready to be tied to a package or hung on a tree. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this fun gift packaging idea using Lawn Fawn products. Please be sure to visit the Lawn Fawn blog for more information on this project. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Happy holidays, and we'll see you next time.